Give it a second. Okay. Hello and welcome everybody to another Monday Mutterings. I got it right. Yeah. Yeah, you did this uh, time. <laughs> we, uh, this time we will be talking about a couple different things. Uh, we'll be talking about 10th edition Warhammer 40k, at least my feelings on it, mm -hmm. and um, we will be talking about some of the Warhammer Fest um, previews involving Horus Heresy. So, I hope everybody's uh, having a good day, and uh, we'll start with a very first topic. Warhammer Horse, the Horus Heresy has gotten another uh, roadmap of sorts. Yeah, if you're not familiar, it's an idea of what's coming in a relatively idea when. And hmm. that is, uh, it can be useful if you're planning ahead or you're waiting for something. And it's divided, of all things, between plastic and resin. Now, I have a theory that one of the big reasons they keep pushing resin huh. in uh, Horus Heresy is because they're working on Epic. Uh, and that explain, it, you need to explain that. Uh, Epic is a uh, much smaller scale. I think it's like a 10 millimeter to 15 millimeter. Yeah. I can't remember. Uh, Grand War game, effectively. So you'd have like huge armies but because they're relatively small it didn't take up a lot of space it's it's uh, an older game system if you're not familiar okay but this kind of raises the immediate question of why they're doing too much <sighs> in my in my opinion they're doing too much they're they don't have the production capabilities to run three main games, let alone four or five. Because if this is what I think they might end up doing, you're going to have Warhammer 40k, Age of Sigmar, Horus Heresy, uh, Warhammer the Old World, and oh, then geez. Epic on top of it. And they're seems... all going to be fighting for production. Well, that's, that's what I mean. It's like, why keep doing this? I don't know, um, to be perfectly honest. But, uh, yeah, so we got finally a roadmap, and it involves things like a plastic assault squad. And a update to the MK3. And I believe they're hinting at the Dordaro... Uh, Dreadnought, which, uh, I'll put up an image so everybody can see those. Um, but one of the big issues, I think, and this is a, a point I'm going to make, is the Assault yeah. Squad. They have what been trying to push Mark VI armor as being the main armor for Horus Heresy for a while. And, uh... There's a lot of reasons I don't think it's a good idea to do. Yeah. But, you know, I will put a small um, element on this and go, I personally like Mark VI armor. When I saw the previews for the Mark VI armor way back in the, the Never Age, so I never thought age. that one of the things that they were going to do or introduce that would have been smart, in my opinion, was the scouring. Mm. So that we were going to have an expansion to the Horus Heresy. Because they're kind of closing it out in the books. So the scouring's there. And I'm like, hey, that'd be a great idea. Because then you could introduce the scouring. And you have the, the Beaky Marines. There. And they would be fairly, to a degree, prominent at least-ish during that period. So there's that. I don't hate mark six armor i do actually really like it but i think it's really inappropriate for a number of reasons uh or legions especially um especially when you're talking uh, iron hands uh death guard and i would even say uh one of the armors types i think should be more predominant for the iron warriors is mk2 hmm. because they like just throwing really brutal things forward. But, yeah. 
that's neither here nor there. We are finally getting an assault troop, and it will be in plastic, but for a lot of people, it's going to be MK6. But on the positive side... I love the reluctance for you to say ish that. Is that if you really don't like MK6, you can just kind of change the head. And it doesn't look like MK6 barely anymore. I mean, mm. on the surface, if you know what MK6 armor looks like, you're going to be like, it's MK6 armor. But <laughs> if you change the head out, and there's a lot of ways you can do that, it, it's not so horrible. I, I, that's that's my trying to put a nice spin on it. Now, hey, maybe you can get like a, a, a pack or something that's going to allow the other armor. Who knows? It's GW. Well, hard to say until the actual release. So, that... We're finally going to get another plastic troop option. Thanks. But <laughs> the weird thing is, is we're going to... This is going to be the where I start going into the negative. Yeah. So please forgive me. We're going to get MK3 armor redo <clears throat> before we get assaults so we're talking winter for the assault squad which for some armies you can't make them work Ooh. with their organization you you don't you really actually need them like there's certain blood angel formations yikes and it but in autumn we're gonna get mk3 update hey does that seem ass backwards? Why not both? Just just the one of those things. I understand a reason why, but I'm not going to give them that benefit of the doubt right now. Because I don't really blame They've had blame a you. year to get a squad out like that. They had almost a year and a half, I believe at this point, to have updated the older marks of armor. And they could have led with that. True. But they didn't. Nope. So, I, I'm not going to be as nice. But if you want something even more egregious, you're not going to get a Legion Command Squad till spring. What? Yes. So Why? After you get a update to an older armor, after you get an Assault Squad, then... You get a command squad. <laughs> oh boy. Now, personally, I'm glad that it's coming out. I know it's going to be an MK6. Yeah. But the problem is, is like, guys, what is your priority? We're going to get a Knight Lancer in plastic, which is a, basically a Titan, in <clears throat> summer. Okay, well, here's my immediate question. There's no breachers at all mentioned. Purified. Up until the beginning of next year, they don't even have a hint at a breacher squad. Next year? No, no, no it's not on there. The la So it goes from spring of this year to spring of next year. What? No the breachers. What? Mentioned. Uh. So have fun with that. <laughs> <laughs> Iron Warriors, Iron Hands, Winky I don't Wink. understand. So they're not mentioned. And the order is backwards as hell. So, as I said, please don't take this the wrong way. I'm being negative, but it's because I care well, more. Say you're being negative because it's, well, it's kind of stupid. But your Legion Command Squad, why the hell is that? not in summer with the night. That's a solid question. It's kind question of an important question, you know, because at the moment, you have to have... Uh, I'm not even going to go into those details. It's You're another not, HQ not? option that would make sense to change things up. But the problem is, is no matter what order I shuffle this in, I go... Why weren't these out earlier? That That's the problem. The innate problem is it's not necessarily that they decided to do it in this ass-backwards manner. It's that 
it took this long for them to do it in this ass backwards manner. So I'm a little bit annoying, especially since you're introducing new players who might not have Forge World money to a game, and then you're basically giving them nothing. Agreed. Till uh, till this long after the game's been out, so that that irritates the shit out of me. This is beyond tone deaf. This is beyond just out of sync with your own players. Yeah, I should say so. You made Horus Heresy your third mainline game, and you've basically sat there shitting out tanks. Oh, God, yeah. The tank situation is... And I love tanks, but that's ridiculous. And they mostly done it because it's only one extra sprue they have to make with each variant in a lot of cases. Ugh. Which is... It, I, hey, if you're the engineer that worked on those sprues, fantastic. You did a hell of a good job being able to go, hey, how do I get the most out of these molds And yet I the can? fact of the matter is GW still just forcefully producing tanks and giving no one anything they asked for. There's a part of me that worries that the line that's producing the uh, the, the plastics for Horus Heresy is yeah. like one half of a line. Oh. And they're, they're mostly using it to run... Part of it's being used to run the main parts of like the spark... I'm just going to use this for example. The Land Raider. That's fine. Yeah. And then the other half is trying to run at least one or two of the variant versions. Uh, extra sprue. I'm no expert, but I have been in a plastic factory for a while. So mm. I, I do have at least experience down on the lines with them. Not a manager. Just saying that is what I wonder is the reason they're doing it. Because they can run one part of it as the main part that's just general to all the variants, and then they run the other half to producing um, the variant sprues. Now, with all this being said, what about the whole 10th edition situation? Because I know that we looked into some of that this weekend, too. Well, I got one more thing to cover in Horus, and then we're going to go into 10th edition. All right. Um, I'm not going to go into super amounts of detail. I'm going to give uh, more of my concerns, because... I could sit here and break down a lot of stuff, and I'm getting sidetracked. Sorry. We can give some context, too, but that's fine. But, uh, so we are on the last bit of Horse Heresy stuff. They're giving a book out, finally. It's a campaign book for Siege of Symphonia? Confonia? It's Horace's Homeworld. Okay. And it's supposed to feature a, a campaign system and rules and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> It, personal opinion, it feels like one of the most pointless battles in the Horus Heresy. They're fighting over a world that has been so mined out, it's devoid of resources. The only significance it has is that uh, the War Master came from it. Fair. So, there's that. With this campaign book, which, uh, I, I hope the campaign book has like a general use and like adding like hey you want to do a c your own campaign here's a rules a rule system or a structure system to help you create that for like events maybe personal gaming things like mm. that that's my hope and sorry people a bit of a pollen up uh here today yep but to go along with this we got two characters who i know are purely in resin you have a horse heresy guy who I'm not going to try to say his name. <laughs> it's a it's a bad Scrabble hand. Um, and you got uh, Everend Garrus. I know I probably screwed that up. The in Imperial <laughs> Fist character. They're both okay. named characters. I would say, on the whole, th their actual little bit of story about them. It's not too bad. It seems to fit the characters. It's not horrible. The models are interesting. Um, <laughs> I don't hate them on an instinctive level. Okay. 
I see some um, definitely uh, potential for people who want who want to put the effort in mm. to uh, kind of kit bashing their own characters. But on a personal level, it annoys me because I've been putting together a, a true Sons War Band. So the horse hair, the horse Sons of Horse character <laughs> is <laughs> it's like, damn it, I don't want to buy from Forge World. <laughs> Too fucking expensive. <sighs> All right, so enough of that complaining and. I would just say in closing to the horse heresy stuff, if that's all you care about and you want the overview, it's the it's better than I thought they were going to do, but it's less than they should have. That seems normal. I feel that they've led with the wrong foot by trying to push this um, Siege of Siphonia. It should have been just a uh, campaigns in the horse heresy. And it just should have been a book about creating campaigns for your group, game stores, tournaments. Yeah. With some extra bits in there and how to do it. Maybe a couple extra things in there. Blah, blah, blah. I think that would have been fairly accepted by the community. But I'm not I think it would have been handled better. I feel that it would have been a better foot forward. Um I really think that they should have put more time in going, hey guys, don't worry, we're going to take all of the Legion particular Praetors, and they're going to be in plastic. That would have been a better step forward, as opposed to making endless Primaris lieutenants in plastic that <sighs> anyone who tries to justify... Oh well, you know they they can't make all of the Praetors in plastic because they'll never but they make, make their these money stupid back. stupid Primaris. But they're making Primaris lieutenants. These Primaris that, by a lot of people's standards, are completely unwanted and kind of intrusive, and they still uh, keep trying to force them. And I feel that one of the things, love Primaris or not, that's not the point, is that that I think it is. very fact that they're doing that defeats the whole argument of, well, it's just too expensive. Yeah. Well, I, it's... It kind of makes it seem like a blatant lie, so they can just favor the production of these monopose Primaris models. Well, it wouldn't be not monopose with the Praetors, but I get your point. But uh, on another part of the conclusion, it, it, they're doing some of the things that they should have done almost a year ago. So I'm going to go, that's a positive, but they're just leading with the wrong foot at this point. And they're Agreed. rubbing a lot of people the wrong way. And let's be perfectly honest. When is the last time anyone's really seen uh, much in the way of the community do anything with the horse heresy? Especially if you're talking Not content creators. Very. Often. I don't see a lot of people who got giant boxes of the Age of Darkness doing anything. I don't think so. There are people, but... <laughs> All right. Now we'll go into a uh, 10th edition. Please. All right. What do you know, uh, Farv, about a uh, 10th edition? Uh, well, since I'm not known for mincing words, it's kind of like a uh, renamed 8th. Well, it has a lot of the same language uh, that you would see around the time 8th edition came out. Uh, it's simpler. It's leaner. It's meaner. We're going to put out some of this stuff. Free-ish. I know... Free-ish. <laughs> I still remember that when 8th was getting ready to come out, mm -hmm. one of the biggest buzzes was that they were going to give you the basic rules for free. Holy hell! GW's going to give you something for free, and people... It got them a lot of goodwill initially. Yeah. And a lot of people actually liked the index systems. Yeah, I get it. A lot of people were like, they were... It lacked character, blah, 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 blah. But it was probably the best that it was. Mm. Um, I'd say everything after the indexes was downhill. I could agree. But we're seeing a lot of the same language that was kind of used in the marketing. And what blows my mind is that more people aren't pointing it out already. Well, I think one of the big problems, and this is not going to try to get into besmirching anyone... Yeah. Is that a lot of people really have a lot of passion for their game. And they really do uh, 
love and enjoy it, and they want good things. And they are afraid that if they're negative in any way, they won't get it. Plus, let's be perfectly honest, there is such a thing as hype. People often get blinded by hype, Damn. and that kind of thing. So I do. I don't. I'm not going to attack anyone on this. It's just I see it going on. I've been around a long time. Like I said, metal the plastic. Not as old as some, but pretty old by a lot of standards. Um. So I look at the marketing, and a lot of it kind of comes off as. Eh. Now, I'm not going to jump to any conclusions. Like, uh, when I was looking at some of the previews, like, they had toughness. And some of the vehicles, like, have obscene levels. Or, like, what I would consider viewing it from, like, the old days. Obscene <laughs> levels of, like, toughness. Where I'm like, what the hell? Yeah. But the problem but do you I feel have, like they're jacking up the stats? Some are getting jacked up. Others aren't. And this is where giving criticism is one of those issues that's tricky because I don't have the full context. Well, I, right, because it's all preview right now. I don't have the ability to open the book down and go, okay, so the full context of why this is different is because these things. So on an instinctive level, I look at things like that and I go, that makes me kind of concerned about the lethality or – the stat bloat in certain areas. Mm -hmm. But until I have it to grapple, I I don't really feel like I can go, oh, well, this is going to be a bad idea. But I'm cautious about it. I'm going to hold my judgment in reserve. Um, what is actually, I think, important, at least in my opinion, yeah. is that I've looked through all of these rules... Um, previews and uh, I, I have a feeling it's not going to be any less bloated than 9th I have a feeling it's going to be just as bloated but it's going to be stealth you're going to have to it's explain going, to some people what stealth bloat is it's going to be more upfront on the card initially for the units so you're going to feel like it's less because you're only going to ever see it in bite size forms but they didn't really de-bloat things also we already have confirmation they're going to go right into the codex treadmill without any guarantee that they're going to try to fix the innate problem with the codex treadmill does anybody but me recall what the real problem with the codex system is? I do, but you really need to give the context for the people who are listening. Okay, so my fears with 10th edition, I'm going to sum it up for people who don't want to hear the entire ramble, is that I have a feeling that they're going to use it as a thing to sell even more crap at you, and that they're going to expand it but they're going to try to turn it into bite sizes. And by that, I mean they're still going to want to sell you a $60 core rule book. They're still going to want to sell you a $60 codex that's going to be outdated in six months. They're just going to take certain things and they're going to turn it into smaller presentations. So you're going to get card packs. You're going to get unit cards. Mm. It's going to take the rules and it's going to move them further away from each other in context. Jeez. Oh, That's my fear. My fear is that you're going to have these mission decks. Then you're going to have these unit card decks. And then you're going to have all of these different formations and blah, blah, blah. You're going to have all of this and you're going to have all of these different card forms on top of codexes and that by the time that in context you employ all of these things it's going to swamp you especially a new player with so much garbage to keep track of that all of the changes mean nothing mm. 
that nothing's different, nothing's changed, just the way that they're able to sell you a monetizable DLC in card decks and codexes. Ugh. That's my immediate concern. That's not to say anything negative about people who are excited about it. That's not to say anything negative that it might actually not be at all like what I'm saying. Well, it's to not be fair, you said it was a concern, not a criticism. So, please take it in that context. This is not a personal attack. This is me going, I'm worried, based on a track record, that this is what they're going to do. So... We, uh, for example, they're, they talked about missions. Now, mm -hmm. missions, are like it's a deck that has four different parts to it. And they go into all this detail about how to do this and that. And I sat there and I was like, okay, well, it's basically Maelstrom of War, which is very popular. Where, depending on what you're playing with Maelstrom of War, you'd pull a yeah. card or two, or even maybe four... Uh, every turn it came up. So once you'd both finished your first turn, you would discard whatever you had, you'd get victory points based on what you accomplished, and then you'd draw new cards. Okay. And it would give you different objectives, like uh, kill a character with um, a rock. Not really like that, but just throwing it out there. <laughs> Seize uh, uh, checkpoint one or something. Gotcha. Uh, you'd get these different things, and it would change up what you're kind of doing, keeping the game more dynamic. Well, it feels a lot like that, but it's like divided into four layers, if that makes sense. I believe it does. So, on the surface, I don't have any real issue with it. I haven't seen it in play. <laughs> I have an idea of what it's like. So I'm a feel, have a feeling it plays out a lot like Maelstrom of War, or whatever that mode was called. Uh, it's it's one of those days with the pollen and headaches, guys. Sorry about that. But um, my fear with it is I immediately thought, oh god, they could do seasons with this. Uh, yeah, and they could. Or have a yearly deck that comes out. Ooh. Yeah, that immediately made me go, hmm. Now, for some people, it depend on how expensive it was. But it's GW. True. And, uh, I mean, if they were selling it for, like, $5 card packs, I wouldn't care. Whatever. <laughs> uh, here's your $5. Whatever. But I have a feeling it's going to be... 15 at the cheapest, 25, maybe 30, more mm. than likely. Then you have the uh, the unit cards, which are going to be sold as packs, which immediately made me go, oh, boy, if you want those cards, which is kind of a thing I think you already have to face with, with uh, some of the cards that they had for units. Ooh. Is that they get outdated very quickly, especially if rule adjustments occur. And then on top of it, you're not going to have the cards for uh, new units. Now, if they stay as keeping those free on the website, so, oh yeah, here's the new unit, the uh, the Primaris Yank Master or whatever. Yank Master. Uh, oh, well, I don't have the rules for him. I have the box. Oh, I'll just go to the website and print it out. Cool, whatever. Or put it on the app. Whatever, don't care. <laughs> if they don't do that, so they're just like, all the stuff at the beginning's free. Ha ha. And then everything else is purchased. My immediate thing is... They're not going to sell those cards individually, are they? Wouldn't think so. They'll sell them as yearly packs. So it won't be just all the new units. It'd be like um, Primaris Yankmaster and the other y Primaris. Buy the entire deck again to get the two or three units that we just put out. <sighs> so 
that's kind of my issue is that I see where the monetization of it is, and then I'm going, yeah. it feels like they're adding a lot of extra product on top of already a lot of stuff they want you to buy. <laughs> Am I the only person that feels this way? I, again, not attacking I would hope anyone. not, but because uh, it does really kind of seem suspect. So I immediately have that concern. Um, then, I mean, there was the 10th edition launch box that they just previewed. And it immediately made me very, very sad. Hmm. Um, and for a number of reasons. One... I will full on admit I don't like Primaris. I dislike them. I think they look uh, lanky and stupid. Well, anybody who's you know listened to any of our stuff already knows we have an issue with the Primaris. I also feel that they're a they're a confusing organization that's difficult for people to even explain half the time what half the damn units do. And it's just a way for them to continuously sell you even more variants of Space Marines instead of producing other things for other factions. Now that I can definitely agree with. Since a lot of the other armies do get left in the dust because they want to produce more... And I know I keep bitching about this, but they want to produce more monopose Space Marines. Now on the positive... I actually really like the update to the Terminators. That's fantastic. It's very close to what it is. Thank you for the nostalgia hit. Huh. Um, the Terminator Captain and the Librarian are good. Um, the Primaris Weirdos with the Flamethrowers, they're just intercessors, but whatever. <laughs> they, they have big flamethrowers, and if you like big flamethrowers, there you go. Uh, and then you have the Stern Guard being Primarified, and I, I'm going to be perfectly honest, they look like Blade Guard with different arms. Yikes. Just, that's what they look like, because that's effectively what they are. I, and, like, how desperate are you to sell Blade Guard? <laughs> and wow. uh, the, that new dread thing. I like the idea it's using the old box dreads weapons, but it's chicken legs. Annoy the <laughs> hell out of me. It, 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 uh, it does look I'll, like a design from, like, Dragon's Crown. I'll see the top of it, and I'll be like, hey, it's the old stuff that I like. And then I'll go down and, like, why does it have, like, a baby on board stomach? And then I'll look further down, and it's like, it's got chicken legs, and I'm like, uh I actually say, if I, I was a person looking at the launch box that they're calling Leviathan, I would actually be way more hyped about the Tyranids. They feel like well, Tyranids. Well, they do feel like Tyranids. It's bringing back some old units, which is fantastic. It's updating some others, and they just feel more inventive and interesting. I'll be perfectly honest. The squibbly bug guys are more interesting squibbly. than the generic, boring-ass stuff. And frankly, I think it's also a matter of overexposure. Every other thing they release is Space Marines or Primaris. So, I mean, of course, some of it's starting to kind of look samey, especially when they're obsessed with taking advantage of the cheaper means of producing monopose. So everything does start to look the same. So when something tends to stand out, it stands out even more. Yeah, one of my big problems with the Primaris from a, a, a stylistic perspective is they look so samey and boring. Mm -hmm. They just are devoid of character. But, you know, that, that's not here, that's here nor there. But, um, it is, but, you know. 10th edition... I'm hoping it's good for the people who want to play it. And I'm hoping that it does the things it's claiming to do. Mm -hmm. But I don't trust it at all. In it, the slightest. There are a lot of things on there that make me go, eh, it just feels like it's another way to sell me something on a thing that I'm already buying a and lot like, look, for. And, like, look, we get it. A company has to make money. 
But GW is, even with the economy still raking in cash, they're not desperate. This is just greedy. Well, I got no problem with them making a profit off yeah. Tenth Edition and all of this. My problem immediately comes into when I start thinking in context, okay, so at least one of us is going to have to tote a main book yeah. to the game. It's, one the, of us, it's also the deliberate drop in quality, but the price not you know, lowering accordingly. Well, you do feel like you're getting a lot less in model. Mm-hmm. But, uh, so the rules, as a whole, I don't feel like it's anything but more of like a, a ninth edition tinker room. That could be good. Um, the box set looks like it'll be fine for people who, uh, will like either of those factions if you don't like primaris um yeah well you're gonna get a librarian a terminator captain and a terminator squad and you can sell everything else and probably make a decent amount off it yeah <clears throat> i'm just gonna be perfectly honest or you just wait and buy it from a scalper which is how sad is that that is incredibly sad because i hate fucking scalpers and it's a miserable state of affairs when I hear you, who also hates the whole idea of scalping, suggesting it for any reason. Well, it's just one of those things, like, I don't like the Primaris, so I don't want them. So, I'm not going to buy this box <laughs> to get them. Yeah. I'm hoping that GW puts these things out in relatively uh, quick succession, but I doubt yeah, it. Yeah, one never fucking knows with them. But I, I have a lot of concerns when it comes to Warhammer 40k, uh, especially with this new edition, because, and I've, I'm going to reiterate it a few times, the rules don't seem bad on their own, mm -hmm. but they didn't sound bad on their own in 8th, 9th, 7th, 6th, 5th, 4th, 3rd, 2nd. It wasn't till you got to uh, grapple with the meat of the thing that yeah. you really got any context of what you were dealing with, what the monster under the covers look like. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I could sit here all day and go, well, <laughs> by their previews, um, it seems pretty good. Seems all right. Doesn't seem like they went too crazy at all. Uh, I'm not even going to talk about the characters one that they put out because uh, I feel like that's asinine to me to even bother. Why do you say that? Well, one, I'm going to reiterate like the old hero hammer problem. Oh. And then, uh, quite honestly, I, I just look at it and go, I don't know until I see how this game runs what what to think about the whole thing so i'm already at a point where i'm a little cautious um i'm gonna really need to see it played in context and not played by people who've been play testing it for a year or two yeah like maybe seeing some actual fresh you know fresh blood or fresh faces at least i want to see two idiots who read the book try to grapple with it makes sense not somebody who's just been intimately familiar with the rules for fucking i don't forever. want to see a games workshop guy playing another games workshop guy <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing against them lovely people but i don't want the context of two people who are going to give me a very narrow vision of what the game is because they're paid to do that and they're going to give me the highlights as much as possible. Yeah. I want to see two people who have been in the hobby and are going to sit there and go, how the hell does that work? <laughs> because you're going to have that experience at the table. Yeah, so, absolutely. I'm not going to wa wobble on about the heroes. Um, you mean wibble? Yeah, whatever. Wobble, wibble, <laughs> wibble, wobble. I'm not going to waste my time on it. Just no reason to it's a stupid waste of time which is pretty much most of these rules previews are stupid waste of time 
I hate to put it that way. Well, I mean, but it's kind of true. They're a good idea to keep people excited and interested and to kind of give them an idea of where you're going. But, yeah, we'll see when the game comes out. Um, depending on how expensive, one thing we might try to do is grab a copy. Mm. And then uh, me and Farve will sit down and well, we'll talk about our first impressions. Might be worth it, depending <laughs> on if they try to, you know, money gouge us on it. I do know that there's the rules are supposed to be free for the rule or rule book. So, well, no, it's been a little while since I, I checked out what they said, but they're supposed to have the basic rules so we can at least give a better context. So we'll go back to some of these previews and go, okay, well, this is how it plays in game. Not just how the preview tells you it is. Well, that makes some sense. Things are better, guys, because the toughness went up. Yeah, but why'd the toughness <laughs> go up? We because everything will murder time. you instantly? I mean... It, 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 it's probably not that extreme. It's probably something basic like, hey, uh, tanks blow up too fast. Yeah, well... That 20 million las guns. I'm joking, by the way. <laughs> but uh, we'll see how it is. So... Right now, it if you're going to ask me, all right, Mr. Nobody, should I get the box? If you're really, really into Space Marines and you really like all the models, split it with a friend. Yeah. If you're a Tyranid player, yes. <laughs> Just yes. Don't even have to ask me, you know, why aren't you pre-ordering it right now? I'm joking. But uh, it, by GW standards, it's a solid box. Um, it feels like you're getting at least a decent box um, for what you're, you're going to get. You might have some decent expansion capabilities from it. Terminators are cool. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm fairly unmoved. I need to see some relatively big moves for the 40k uh, rule system before I really have any desire to play any of the new iterations of the rule set. Hmm. Okay, if GW really reasonable. wanted my, uh, my goodwill, here's an idea. Put up on a print-on-demand, like even create your own print-on-demand, whatever. I don't care. Of all the old rule books and codexes, and let me be able to purchase them, so that if I want to introduce people to third edition or whatever, I can do that. That would be a great one. Um, it'd be a lot of goodwill there. Um, okay, well that that's my spill on uh, 40k because <laughs> honestly. The big problem I have with a lot of the rules previews is they lack context. They don't tell me anything but what they're changing in a vacuum. And they're there to to give you hype. To yeah. get you pumped about buying the product. And Yeah. I mean granted that's how that's supposed to work, but it's at the same supposed time... to get you keep you interested. And I understand this, but uh, I, I I guess it's just that I, I'm an older player and I'm at well, this point Well, we're a little going, jaded because we've seen a lot of this before with other editions and other releases. Yeah. I, I we've really, seen some of the admittedly shady things they've done with releases. I'd prefer that they did less of these isolated uh, previews and they gave us more solid things yeah now uh, there are some elements that i like of what they they're changing and things like uh, the command phases the getting rid of the psychic phase thank you mm. good idea <laughs> uh just making the psychic abilities just innate to psychers also i feel feel like it's a good idea um and i feel like some of the the op things that they're changing are good but what aren't they telling me? What are they changing 
well, that I wouldn't feel positive to. That's a good question. What are they doing that might end up being a situation of did they change this purely to sell me something else? Well, it's kind of that feeling of what's waiting in the wings to bite me in the ass if I if I step into this. Exactly. GW really wants me to walk down this dark alley, but I'm a little apprehensive. But look, a shiny. <laughs> That's how I yeah, feel no about it. no fucking kidding. I would prefer if they had, even if it had to be, they bring in some... Uh, uh, the couple of their GW presenters, and they sat down, and they're like, okay, here's how this plays out in full context. Yeah. They don't have to give me every single detail of the rule system. I get it. They want to sell me it. Of course. But I, mean, I would like fine. it if I got a little bit more than, hey, we have changed vehicle toughness. Get mm. the hype and pre-order. Yeah. But that's my closing. I'm um, I'm actually quite disappointed in this Warhammer Fest. I don't think I've walked away from Warhammer Fest in the last 10 years impressed. I think I've mostly just been kind of neutral to it or slightly disappointed. That's unfortunate. Which is really irritating because this is a hobby that I actually really enjoyed... But, you know, um, if you feel otherwise, yeah, just throw up something on there. Th again, we're not trying to attack anyone. Yeah, we're, we're not trying to fight. start fights. We're not here for internet cloud or flame wars and all this bullshit. Maybe you could throw something in there that's like, hey, look, maybe think about this. Or it's like, have you seen or heard something we haven't? You know, that kind of thing. Again, I'm always willing to admit when I'm wrong. I don't believe I'm the absolute truth. I just, I don't feel that the company is doing its absolute most to, to really get keep me as a, cup, a customer. Yeah. Like, what are they doing that One Page Rules doesn't at this point? Mm. And in a far clunkier manner. Yeah. <laughs> But, hey, uh, that's my opinion. If you agree with us, if you don't, hey, that's fine. Hey, it's part of the hobby. We're supposed to be, like, able to well, have yeah. these conversations. You're supposed to be a – it's how it used to be. You know, you just – you get into a hobby and you just debate and argue and shit about yeah. it. I mean everything I said in a friendly manner. So if you're excited, hey, throw a comment down. Let me know why you're excited. I'd love to actually know – what people are looking for. And yeah, like to. I said, if there's something you think we missed or isn't quite accurate or you've heard something different, you know, pop that in there because it can always be a talking point if we do a follow-up on this too. Oh, and hey, maybe we'll throw it in there. We'll have something that we didn't catch and we'll put it in there and I'll try to make sure that uh, we give you credit. But again, I don't care if you agree or disagree with us. Just as long as you had a good time and uh, maybe... You you got something else to consider. And that'd uh, be it, it for us. All right, everybody. Thanks for popping in, and we'll see you next time. Later. Later.